So it has been quite a while since I have posted a video on YouTube, and that is not because I have been away on like a winter break from my university, but also unfortunately because I have been fighting a head cold since Christmas. I can happily inform you I'm mostly better at this rate. I'm ready to get going again. But of course, now we're in the spring semester here at my university. So, uploading schedules, you know, they're still gonna be wonky. There's nothing set in stone, but I wanted to get this video out. That's right, everyone. Today, it is finally the day we install an electric start kit on the Predator 212cc Drift Trike. Of course, there are plenty of, there are some sources online on how to do this kit, but let's be honest, um, a couple of them that I've referenced, um, they, they're missing some key points. They're vague. It's just, it's hard to follow. And with this video, I am hoping to uh, give a clear, detailed description on how to assemble this whole kit, how to install the, the electrical components, and how to do the wiring and confirm that everything is in working order. So, one thing that I should mention though, is this uh, kit is compatible moreover for the non-Hemi version of the Predator 212cc engine. If you happen to have the Hemi version of this engine, it, you can still follow this uh, tutorial, don't get me wrong, but you're going to have some part incompatibility issues. I hope that makes sense, but you're going to have to, if, if I'm not mistaken, you're going to have to uh, get a specific flywheel that will work with this kit because I think there's something different uh, with the tapering of the Hemi versus non-Hemi, but you're going to have to, someone down in the comments, uh, someone down in the comments that, like explain like what like why this doesn't have because i'm not really too sure because i have a non hemi so i don't really i really don't have to worry about this issue now the kit that you can buy um in the link in the description for amazon or ebay should commonly come with a, a compatible flywheel a, a charging coil a starter solenoid the switch box itself now as far as tools of, of what you're going to be needing you're going to be needing a eight millimeter socket and ratchet you're also additionally going to be needing a three quarter inch or a 19 millimeter socket to remove the flywheel nut um, you'll need a torque wrench capable of torquing up to 54 foot pounds so reinstall on the new flywheel and as far as like removing it, it's possible that you can use a flywheel puller. I'm not testing that because I don't have one. All I have is a, a, a large screwdriver and a hammer. Um, but I'm gonna uh, show a little bit of spoilers here. Um, further, like later on in the clips, you'll possibly see me using a rubber mallet. Might not be the best option, but at the same time, you really don't want to beat the snot out of the crankshaft because you don't want to be damaging the threads, damaging the crankshaft, because if that fails, well, that's game over for your engine. So uh, for the best advice that I can give for that, look up how to remove a flywheel on YouTube or check out a credible source down in the YouTube video's description here. So aside from that, um, you're also additionally gonna need like an angle grinder or a Dremel or some other kind of metal cutting device because there's some interference issues or for when, after you mount your solenoid, your upholster cover is gonna be interfering with the solenoid. So it won't really fit as well. So some, uh, also some other additional and optional things needed uh, that you're gonna need is some bolts. Uh, you're gonna be looking for some M61 by 25 millimeter hex bolts for mounting the charger coil, the solenoid, and, and um, electric start switch itself. Um, you'll need an additional two more if you're using two charging coils, because sometimes some kits might come with one charging coil, the others might come with two, or you might just have an additional charging coil, you wanna mount two charging coils, that's totally up to you. Um, some other things too, you, you can use a impact driver for removing the flywheel nut, but not for torquing it. I'm not sure if I mentioned this yet, but something to hold the flywheel in place as you're removing or torquing it back into spec. Uh, there's, you can, you might have a fabricated flywheel holder or something to hold the flywheel in place. I'm going to be using a strap wrench for this video. And, and after, after that, another thing you, that you will need is like a feeler gauge or a business card for setting your uh, ignition coil gap. And then some, for later on down the road, some additional wiring and connectors for uh, tidying things up or say if you're mounting this to the front of your go-kart or mini bike whatsoever. And then you'll need some shrink tubing, cable ties, electrical tape, just for uh, tidying this for later. That You can skip for that later. But um, if, if you're wondering like why I'm looking not in here, or if you're wondering why I'm looking at this way and not towards the camera, that is also because I'm reading off a PDF that I've created with a detailed set of instructions that I'm gonna be going by in this video here. 
because this is because this was the first time I've actually broken into the engine and replaced parts. Like I haven't removed a governor, I haven't replaced cans whatsoever. This is the first time I'm replacing parts essentially. So if you would like to see a detailed set of instructions as opposed to watching this video or to follow along with this video, there is a link in the description uh, for to download this PDF uh, at your will. Now, with that, hope, with hopefully everything out of the way, let's go ahead and cut to my dad's garage and let's get started. Remove the engine from your project, disconnecting any extra kill switches, if coming off of a go-kart, drift trike, or mini bike, and place on a suitable and ergonomic workstation for the installation. Before proceeding, disconnect the spark plug from the engine. Disconnect the wiring for the factory kill switch and remove the four bolts securing the pulley shroud on the engine using the 8mm socket and ratchet. Note, if you still have the gas tank and governor arm installed in your engine, bring the bottom end up of the shroud as you pull out to clear the governor arm and other components of the engine. Remove the two bolts holding the ignition coil using the 8mm socket and ratchet. Remove the coil from the engine and set aside for later. Use a strap wrench or other means to secure the crankshaft statically to remove the flywheel nut with your impact driver or ratchet wrench using the 3 quarter inch or 19 millimeter socket on hand. Remove and set aside the impeller and pulley starter, which is the plastic piece and metal cup respectively. The flywheel shall now be exposed. Using the prying tool to slide up underneath the flywheel, locate a reinforced spot on the engine that will not damage it, preferable at the base. To avoid damaging the crankshaft, place the flywheel nut back on the shaft. Apply suitable prying force and tap on the nut using the hammer to eject the flywheel from its seal sealed position. Note, when placing the nut on the shaft, do not tighten the front face of the nut past the front face of the crankshaft as this will damage the crankshaft and the threads. Please excuse me for the copywriting music really quick. It took me just a little bit to get this flywheel off, so trial and error may occur during this step. Uh, I will give you some advice. Don't use a rubber mouth. I mean, if you do, you might have to beat it just a little bit more. But you wanna look for one of these guys. Tap it real carefully. And I pried just slightly under the flywheel and this under here. Uh, something like that, kinda. But, yeah. There is a 2x2 square hole pattern where your charging coil will mount. Use the top two mounting holes and your remaining M6 bolts to install the charging coil. The cable extruding from the coil will run under the flywheel, out the, and under the gas tank. Make sure proper clearance from the flywheel is present so the cord does not get caught within the flywheel. The shroud shield on the right side of the engine, the shroud that is not shielding the cylinder head, has a bolt to be removed with the 8mm socket and ratchet. The solder solenoid will go in its place. Note, you may have to move the small metal box that contains the low oil sensor. Unless if you have already deleted the sensor, this note may not be necessary. Install the starter solenoid on the engine using two of the M6 bolts needed. One bolt will be threaded into the original mounting hole of the shroud shield that was removed in the previous step, and the other bolt will mount into the hole slightly below. Install the new flywheel with the gear cogs facing inside of the engine, and do not tighten at this moment, and make sure the flywheel is installed in as far in as possible. Reinstall the impeller, aligning the index holes, and the pulley started, noting the alignment. Install the flywheel nut. Now, you will note in this video that my plastic shroud is slightly sticking out. That is because the stubs on the back side of the impeller do not align with this flywheel for some odd reason. Modification may be necessary, it's not recommended, but it's what I had to do in, for the sake of this video. Sorry for the inconveniences. 
Use your specific flywheel holder and torque the flywheel to 54 foot-pounds. Do not use an impact driver for this. Reinstall the ignition coil with the factory bolts, but do not tighten initially. Use the feeler gauge and set the clearance gap of the flywheel and coil between 0.027 inches and 0.031 inches, according to the Harbor Freight Manual. Tighten the coil when, when the clearance has been achieved. If you do not have access to a feeler gauge, a business card should be a reasonable substitute. Perhaps you also notice now that the flywheel cover removed at the beginning of this procedure is interfering with the starter solenoid. You will have to remove your kill switch from the cover and cut off material from the cover so that you can slide the pull start cover back into place. Install the modified pulley cover along with the key switch box with the four bolts removed from step 3. At this stage, all the new kits should be mounted to the engine and you are ready for the wiring stage. The starter solenoid should have a red wire with a male bullet connector attached. The charging coil installed on the engine should have a brown wire with a black hose and a female bullet connector. The switch box has five wires extruding from the assembly. A small length red wire with a male bullet splice connector. And this particular wire has some heat shrink that must be housing a diode or a rectifier leading into the fuse block inside the switch box. Additionally, there is a small length black wire with both a male bullet splice connector followed by a female splice connector leading from that. Uh, there is a long length black wire with a rubber hose sealed on and a female bullet splice connector. There is a long length red wire with a rubber hose and an o-ring at the end of the wire. And finally, there is a short length green and yellow wire with an O-ring attached to the end of the wire. Recall also the wire from the ignition coil that is connected to the factory kill switch. This should have a female splice connector running to our system. Connect the male splice connector from the small length black wire of the switch box to the female splice connector from the ignition coil. Connect the female splice connector from the second wire mentioned of the switch box to the male splice connector of the black wire to the low oil sensor. Connect the male splice connector from the small length red wire with the male bullet splice connector to the female splice connector of the charging coil. Connect the female splice connector of the long length black wire with the rubber hose sealed on to the red wire with the male splice connector from the starter solenoid. Attach the O-ring from the long length red wire with the rubber hose to the solenoid bulb of the copper threads exposed, the set with no rubber protector. Ground the short length green and yellow wire to the engine. The positive terminal of the battery should have an O-ring connector on one end that connects to the starter solenoid where the red wire is with the O-ring. Tighten down the nut supplied by the, on the copper bolt. The negative terminal of the battery finally should have an O-ring connector that grounds to the engine. If all has gone to plan from the steps above and you are ready to mount the engine to your project, turn the key, start the engine, confirm spark, and you have completed this series of instructables. Well done! Give yourself a pat on the back.
So that's gonna do it for me for, for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you if this tutorial was very helpful for your project, smash that thumbs up. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to, to comment down below. I'll do my best to answer. Of course, there are some other credible sources and a link to a written out PDF of the same exact instructions of this tutorial, essentially. All of that down in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Kaden Aranhawk, and I'll see you guys around. Bye-bye.